Well, the Enneagram is making its rounds again, and it's increasing in popularity as time goes on, unfortunately. Most people don't even understand what the Enneagram is. They think it's just some sort of personality test that some clever dude came up with. And they don't even understand that this thing was born literally out of the occult. It was born out of occultism, Sufi mysticism, and there was a guy named Gerda Jedge that, that brought it to America, introduced it to the West, and then a Catholic mystic named Richard Rohr, who, of course, is buddies with Oprah Winfrey, introduced it to evangelical Christianity, and because evangelical Christianity practices no ecclesiastical separation from false teachers and false teachings, they swallowed up the teachings of Richard Rohr on the Enneagram like a baby bird trying to be fed by its mama, and who cares if it's satanic? Who cares? if it's Luciferian in origin, who cares if it was born out of the occult? It tells me neat things about me. Guys, I'm telling you, this thing is wicked. It's straight out of hell. Even Jackie Hill Perry, as weird as she is, agrees with me on the Enneagram. It's satanic. But an evangelical leader just said the other day something very interesting that I want to point out to you about the Enneagram. Don't go away. All right, guys, smite that like button, and all your dreams will come true, and uh, please consider doing that. That helps the YouTube algorithm. It's one of the ways that you can help this YouTube channel to grow and our message to get out there. Well, here's a uh, tweet that I want to share with you. This is from a, a, a page called e Evangelical Dark Web, and there's a guy named Zach, Tyler Zach at the recent Gospel for the Enneagram Conference tells us that the Enneagram changes views on women leadership in the church. And uh, you're welcome to follow his account, I guess, and uh, you follow us as well while you're on Twitter. But uh, I want you guys to hear what this man is saying, and we're going to dissect it for you, and then we're going to go to the Bible and tell you why this is straight from the pits of hell, what this man just said. So let's take a moment. And Tyler, Zach, tell us what you think. Primarily the Bible, but the Enneagram was a major contribution in him helping me do a 180 on gender roles and understanding women in the church. Uh, because when I, when I saw how Enneagram eight in particular women were wired, I was like, yeah, they're, they're wired by God that way to be powerful influencers. Mm. And I point to Deborah in the old Testament, the judge Deborah, as I think she was an eight. And so I use her as a, as a character to talk about eight themes in her life. And realizing that was helpful for me to change my view, uh, on, on women uh, rather than seeing that God just created all women like the two stereotype, you know? So when, when women talk about their eightness and you're upfront about it, it is really helpful uh, to me to see how God designed you. So just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. So instead of, uh, you know, this guy apparently is a Christian who believes the Bible. I doubt it after reading what he just said there. Um, instead of you know, he took the Bible, this is what the Bible says, and then he took the Enneagram, and this is what the Enneagram says, and now he has changed his views on what the Bible said. Basically, this man is believing the Enneagram more than he's believing the Bible. He is allowing the Enneagram to be the final authority in his theological views rather than the Word of God. Now, that is that, that, if that's not like the m most heretical thing ever, I don't know what it, I mean, this is what all these guys are doing. It's not good. And this is the danger of the Enneagram is that you start using the Enneagram as some sort of sunglasses that you put on and you look at the Bible through the Enneagram. And I have my Macho Man Randy Savage glasses here. These were a prank someone gave me a while back. But, I mean, instead of just reading the Bible, you start reading it through the lens of the Enneagram, and that's when you get into trouble. That's when you get into big trouble. Now, I want you to see, okay, he said that you're an 8. You're an Enneagram 8. I want you to read what an Enneagram 8 is and what he is actually endorsing by saying this, you ready? This is from truity.com. Enneagram type eights. They are called the challenger and they are, you can see the lion there, how cute that is. Eights are defined by their desire to be powerful and to avoid any vulnerability. Uh, I mean, my goodness, they present a confident, assertive, and decisive image to others. Eights can be argumentative and intimidating. It is important for them, important to them to stand up for what they believe in and to protect those who are weaker than themselves. The deepest fear of the eight is being vulnerable and powerless more than anything and cope with this fear by, a way, by always being strong and in control. 
Do you see divine feminine implications in this statement? I think I do as well. Eights are motivated by their desire to be independent <laughs> and in control. They resist appearing or feeling weak and reject any authority that restricts them. That, I mean, I made a documentary about that. Third Adam 3, Rise of the Divine Feminine. If you are an Enneagram 8, hear me. You are a wicked woman. You're not an ace. You're a wicked woman is what you are. Now, I see people do this all the time. Okay, if you are a Christian, you are a Christian. But there's people out there that I see that, that you know, like I, I knew somebody years ago that had a big mouth. I mean, it was a woman, and she could not keep quiet. She was, she was bossy. She was loud. And every now and then somebody would confront her on it and say, you need to take it down a peg. And, and her response was, well, I'm just Italian, and that's how we are. You know, they talk like this with their hands. I'm just Italian. And I, I heard her say that, and I just asked her, I said, well, are you Italian or are you a Christian? And that squashed that conversation. I wasn't trying to be unkind, but that's, that's, that kind of, you know, deflated that argument. Are you an Italian or are you a Christian? Well, this is just how I was raised. Well, no, you're, you're saved now. You're a new creature now. Are you a Christian or are you that? And I think a lot of ladies need to understand, especially in this context, and really I think all Christians need to understand, are you a Christian or are you an Enneagram 8? Because what you're doing is this, the, the way that they state it here, eights are motivated by their desire to be independent and in control. If you are a Christian wife and you are an Enneagram 8 and you desire to be independent and in control, you probably will find yourself in divorce court. I don't know how the Christian marriage could function with somebody who wants to be independent and in control as a woman. That's not how this works. And they resist appearing or feeling weak and reject any authority. That restricts them. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, how, how wicked is that statement in the context of biblical womanhood? I want to show you a couple Bible verses if I can. Um, Boy, I'm going to get in so much trouble in this video. But here, here's what the Bible says about womanhood and about this type of matter, okay? I, I want you, you let you in Agram 8s to consider this, please. The Bible says, Proverbs 21, 9, is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman inside a wide house, in a wide house. You in Agram 8s, I'm strong, independent. Nobody's going to restrict me. You know what you are? The Bible doesn't call you an Enneagram 8. The Bible calls you a brawling woman. And it's tough to live with a brawling woman. The Bible also says in Proverbs 25, verse 24, if I can pull it up for everybody, it says there's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. It, you'd be better living on the roof, pitching a tent. <laughs> Could you imagine? What a terrible thing. And then also Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 15, the Bible says a continual dropping in a very raining day and a contentious woman are alike. You know, if, if, there's a, if there's a dripping a dripping faucet in a house and it's not raining or something, it'd be like drop, drop, drop. But it says a continual dropping in a very raining day, a continual dropping, drop, 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 drop. That's what it's saying. And a contentious woman are alike. A contentious woman is an Enneagram 8. That's exactly what you are. Nah, 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 all the time, fussing and arguing and, and fighting and fussing and arguing, always challenging, always argumentative. You want to be strong and independent. And, and as this says, you don't want any, you, you reject all authority that restricts you. I don't know how in the world you could be a godly woman and be an Enneagram 8. That's, this, you, do you see what I'm saying, folks? This is wickedness. This is straight up hellish. And the Enneagram gives you some sort of excuse for your wicked behavior. Now, I want you to see something in the New Testament this is what all women should strive to be. Really, this is, this is the, the capstone, if you will, the embodiment of Christian womanhood. 
And I think this is very important for all women. If you will learn to function this way, you will be much happier. Your marriage will be a lot better. You're, you'll, I mean, you'll be a better mother. You'll be, you, everything will go so much better if you just live the way God wants you to live. So this whole Enneagram 8 of I'm an independent, strong, fierce, nobody tells me what to do, that is, that is wickedness straight from the pits of hell, wickedness. I don't mind saying that because it is. It's total antithesis to what the Bible says. So let me show you what the Bible says a, a woman should be, okay? It says, 1 Peter 3, 1, you wives be in subjection, your own husbands. That's the opposite. That's the opposite of an Enneagram 8, Okay, you can either be a Bible believing Christian or in a grave eight. That if any obey not the word, they may also without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be that hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a notice this right here, meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God. Of great price, you know. That's 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 where all Christian women are supposed to be. And when it says the meek and quiet spirit, which is the sight of God of great price, and then I read the Enneagram eight, they're motivated by their desire to be independent and in control. There's no middle ground here. They resist appearing or feeling weak and rejecting any authority that restricts them. Does the Lord restrict you? Does God's holy word restrict you? Or do you just do whatever you want? Are there any boundaries in your life? Are there any rules in your life? Quite frankly, I read this and I think, man, in an Enneagram 8, if a woman claims to be, especially a Christian woman, claims to be in an Enneagram 8, I don't know how they could be spiritual. I don't know how in the world you could fulfill this verse and be that. So let's just go back to old Wokachino here and let him say what he says, and let's just compare it with the Bible says. Uh, primarily the Bible, but the Enneagram was a major contribution in him helping me do a 180 on gender roles and understanding women in the church. Uh, because when I, when I saw how Enneagram eight in particular women were wired, I was like, yeah, they're, they're wired by God that way to be powerful influencers. Okay. I mean, let me explain to you what he said. He said, women are wired by God to be powerful influencers. Um, no, that's called having a sin nature. That's what that is. And if you feel like you're wired by God to be powerful, loud leaders, then what that is is flesh, and you need to crucify that and develop what the Bible says, a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. Somebody, and somebody needs to preach a message one day on cheap women, cheap. A woman who doesn't have a meek and quiet spirit is not in the sight of God of great price. That's something we need to consider. Somebody needs to preach that message someday. I don't know. It won't be me. That's too controversial. <laughs> no, it's not. God bless you, friend. Thank you for watching this channel today. We pray that uh, you would use the opportunity to smite that like button. All your dreams will come true and become a channel member today. We love you all. We'll talk to you very soon. Have a good day.